So last time we did atomic term symbols, and then this time let's talk about what happens when we put the free atom uh, and you know bind stuff to it. We put a transition metal in a ligand field. So instead of doing the Russell Saunders scheme that we did last time, so atomic terms will remember two s plus plus one. L, this is our Russell Saunders, and then our J. So this is our atomic. Once we put a ligand around it, now we have a molecule. We have symmetry. We are going to go to this type of symbol, which is you still have your spin multiplicity, 2s plus 1. But instead of having our total orbital angular momentum, we're going to have here is gamma. So this is going to be the total orbital symmetry. Um, and then, so this is when we have many electrons in a molecule. And then, so each state, each term, is going to have a spin multiplicity and then a symmetry. Um, so instead of doing SPDF, we're going to have things like A1G or T1U or EG, et cetera, et cetera, for this gamma symbol. But the spin multiplicity is still the same. It's S, the number of elect unpaired electrons, times 1 half. And then to get the multiplicity, it's 2S plus 1. Okay. So um, things that we're going to kind of assume for this discussion is, uh, so one, we're going to assume that uh, where terms and atoms are split by electron-electron repulsion, this is what causes the difference between states in an atom. We're going to say in this case for the so-called uh, strong field limit, that this electron electron repulsion is still going to be a lot smaller than the energy applied by our ligand field. So H, F. And so what I mean is our ligand field splits our d orbitals, for example, and we know our d orbitals split into, let's say, an octahedral field, EG, T2G. What we're saying is that this ligand field splitting, delta O, is much larger than any electron electron repulsion of states. So uh, this affects how we order our final states for our molecular term symbols. Okay. Um, and a few, couple other things to keep in mind is uh, we said that for a closed shell system for an atom, it was always singlet S. For a closed shell system in a molecule, so all orbitals filled, uh, this will correspond to singlet A1G. And so let's do a practice example of this. So um, suppose that we have some sort of like D1 configuration. Here is D1, for example. And then suppose that we put, uh, so we said know that this splitting is big. So if we consider our occupation here, so what I've drawn here is T2G1 then we can find our molecular term symbol. We have one in pair electrons, so the spin multiplicity is doublet. And then, again, the orbital multiplicity is what's going to be here. So instead of having an SPDF term, we have a symmetry. So we know that this symmetry is T2G, EG. So um, if you don't know the labels of these, what we can actually see is that we have three ways of filling this spin up electron. One here, one here, and one here. So this has got to be a doublet T term. The subscript here, we can only get later from the, knowing the actual symmetries of our orbitals from group theory. OK, so here's that. If, for, on the other hand, we had something like, if let's say these are all filled, and then now we have, so here, there's no other ways to fill this bottom T, 2G orbitals. So there's, we only have to worry about unpaired electrons up here. Or let's say if this is, if, so if one unpaired electron in the EG orbital, then this has got to be a doublet E term, right? Because we have two ways to fill this in. E means it's doubly degenerate. If, on the other hand, we have something like this, And here, this is going to be a triplet term because we have two unpaired electrons. 2s plus 1 is going to be 3. This will be a triplet. And because we have two electrons already filled, we can't put a spin up electron in this second orbital. We can't move this here to here because of the Pauli exclusion principle. So this is actually, there's only one way to fill the, uh, to fill the E set with both electrons spin up. 
So this will be a triplet A term. So again, A, there's only one way to fill the electrons. Uh, the spin is the spin multiplicity. E, if there's two ways to fill the electron. And T, if there's three ways to fill the, fill the electron within the orbitals. OK, so keep in mind that all this kind of, this kind of assignment is not the complete picture because we're, we're still missing the full symmetry. But this is an easy way of finding the ground state multiplicity. Because here we're only looking at ground state terms. Ground state term symbols. So uh, there are other excited states that we're not um, looking at. So for example, I could excite the electron from one of these electrons up to the EG set. Then we have a whole new can of worms and a whole new term symbols that we have to worry about. So, but this is one easy way. If you know how many electrons you have, you know your d orbital splitting pattern, you can figure out your ground state term. So in the next video, we'll talk about a more complicated multiple electron system where we can also consider the symmetries and the term symbols of our excited states.